Hey guys, it's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are gonna be checking out a Linux laptop from Juno Computers called the Jupiter 14. So let's get started. Now I'm a huge fan of 14 inch laptops and the current laptop that you usually see on this channel, which is my Lenovo Yoga Pad S530, is a 14 inch laptop. Now, judging by the size of this, this is something that I like because it's a good balance between work and portability. Now, I don't generally use my laptops for gaming. That's what my desktop is for because I'd rather sit in front of a screen, use my keyboard and mouse instead of trying to navigate through a laptop to play games. But this actually has best of both worlds in a sense. It actually does have its own graphic card as well as an integrated graphic card. Now, as far as the specs on this guy, it's weighing in at three pounds compared to my laptop that I currently have, even though it looks really thin. This is about 3.4 pounds compared to this guy. So yeah, it's already lighter than the current laptop I'm using. And it's also three times faster than that laptop as well. It has an Intel quad core 11th gen 1165G7 clocked at 2.8 gigahertz and turbo boost to 4.7. Now the important bit on this is because it's a 11th gen, you get the Iris XE, which is the brand new integrated graphics from Intel. And I gotta say, it's properly fast on this. Now if that's not enough for you, it also has an NVIDIA 1650 Ti. Now when you're building your computer on his website, you have different options between RAM and storage. And on this guy that he sent over to me has 32 gigs of RAM and it could go up to 64 with two terabytes of NVMe storage, which is great. Again, you have different options on how you want to configure it, but having the support for 64 gigs of RAM, that is impressive. Now it's got a 14 inch IPS panel resolution of 1920 by 1080 with 120 Hertz refresh rate. And it's also matted. So that means that you're not gonna get the glare from the sun if you have this outdoors. Now on this guy, you also get a 46 watt hour battery. And for me, you get about like five to six hours of actual full use. Um, I was using this for work the other day and that's all I used. Five to six hours was the point where I actually needed to charge. Now, as far as connectivity wise, this thing has a lot. Now on one side, you have the power plug with two LEDs next to it. One would tell you if the battery is being charged or is it full. The other one, if it's on standby or if your computer is on. Then you have the power button, a USB 3.2 type A, and then a USB 3.2 type C, and then a two in one headphone jack. On the opposite side, you have the Kingston lock and then also a RJ45, which is a network cable. Yeah, on this little guy, a network cable. You don't know how many times I had to plug in a USB ethernet adapter on my actual work laptop just to get ethernet on this. Then a USB 3.2 type A, a six in one memory card slot reader, and then a USB 3.2 type C again, but it's also Thunderbolt 4. As far as the webcam goes, you have a 720p and also has a little security lock so you can block out the camera and also a built-in microphone. Now it comes shipped with Ubuntu 20.04 and it's fully compatible. He actually has his own repository where he keeps the drivers updated, the software that he has also updated. So anytime there's a change in something, you could update the drivers for it. It's also got a backlit keyboard and the mouse is surprisingly smooth. It's not grippy or anything where my fingers would stick, so I really like the touchpad on this. Now, one of the most important bits is that he has a really good fan controller. In most cases, this laptop stays super quiet, and that's even running a benchmark. Now, to show you, I'm actually running Heavenly Benchmark on this machine, and for the Intel integrated graphics, you could barely hear the fan. And then when I switch it over to run the 1650 Ti, you do get a little bit of fan, but it's not obnoxious. If you were to play around with the settings, you could even go higher than that, but I have not seen the computer actually go to max fan. As far as the scores goes for those benchmarks, for the integrated graphic card, you get 977 for the score, and that's really impressive, keeping at a really smooth rate compared to its old integrated, what, HD 600. And then on the 1650 Ti, the score is 1677. And obviously it is gonna do a lot better, but it's also great that you have that option if you want to play games and use a 1650. It also helps if you're using DaVinci Resolve that needs an Nvidia graphic card. So that was a plus for me. Now at one point, I actually installed three VMs running at the same time on this guy, doing full updates and everything, Windows updates, Arch updates, installing Ubuntu, all at the same time. 
and this machine did not even faint. It, it had no issues. The fan didn't even kick on when I was using all three of those. And the temperature stayed relatively around like 58 to 60. It, it was amazing. This thing is a powerhouse, especially with the 32 gigs of RAM and that storage. I was able to get anything I needed to do with this, especially like I said, running VMs. The base price on this guy is 1070. And again, you have different configurations that you could set up. So it depends on what you need, then it starts going up from there. But honestly, I think it's a really good option that you are able to configure it the way you want before you get it. And honestly, it's not a bad price compared to how much I had to pay for this guy before. Yeah, and especially you get the 1650. It's really best of both worlds. And after using this guy for about a week, uh, I really want to switch over to this laptop now. I hope you enjoyed this review. I am trying to get into laptop reviews and if there was something that I missed or something that I should have tested, let me know down in the comments below. I generally like to review laptops that I would consider myself using. So if I was going to have a review for a 17 inch, I'm not too interested in those because I don't generally would like to use those because I think they're big and bulky versus something like a 14 or 15 inch, something that I would actually use. I would love to review those. And again, let me know what I could do better. And if I'm missing something, I would love to hear your thoughts on that. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.